you mentioned the idea that what we take to be normal everyday reality can also be understood to be a kind of hallucination or you know kind of figment of, of mind which is also a kind of a main a fairly mainstream neuroscience neuroscientific view now um that i know seth wrote about and spoke about a lot and i i know you and he kind of got into a bit of a spat uh, over some some interpretations of the kind of metaphysical underpinnings of psychedelic research uh, maybe um, that's something we can touch on well first of all i admire a new set very much um not only that i i i I haven't had the opportunity to interact with him personally, but what I see of him, I, he's a very likable guy. Um, and my spat was not mostly because of him, um, maybe because of some of the co-authors. Uh, with him, I have the least problem. Uh, although I, I disagree with most of uh, the response he wrote on Scientific American. I mean, I and somebody else wrote an article on Scientific American, and Anil and other co-authors replied to that. I think he didn't he was not accurate uh, and um, in, in his reply and many of the points he he raised yeah maybe they were accurate but they were beside the point if, you know, that that was not the point in contention that was not the relevant maybe we thing. can go to what your your initial point was uh, to okay. see everyone's up to speed so uh, the, the main finding consistent in psychedelic research across groups, not only Imperial College, but groups in Brazil, groups in Switzerland, groups in the US, the main finding for all types of psychedelics is that uh, they reduce brain activity across the board. That is the main finding that has been found for psilocybin, for LSD, for DMT in ayahuasca, uh, but in, in independently over a number of years by several groups. I think the latest one is from uh, Zürich in, in Switzerland, um, which was the group that originally years ago uh, had arrived at the opposite conclusion, but now they realized that there were some artifacts in their interpretations. Uh, there was some um, uh, um, uh, um, caloric bounce back of the brain and the, the time uh, accurate, the, the time resolution of their analysis was not enough to differentiate that bounce back from the reduction of brain activity during the trance itself. Anyway, details, but the main finding and robust finding is what psychedelics do in the brain is reduce brain activity. And we wrote, I and, uh, and Professor, Ed, Professor uh, Edward Kelly from the University of Virginia, Virginia Medical School, uh, we said, um, this is not easily uh, accommodated within a materialist framework. Uh, because if we say that experience is brain activity, then an unfathomable enrichment of experience should be correlated with some increase in brain activity somewhere. Um, you know, the, the information content of a psychedelic trip is orders of magnitude higher than the information content of lying in a brain scanner and looking at it. Um, but it, it, yet, the brain activity of somebody undergoing a trance is lower than that of a control sitting in a brain scanner having received placebo. So something doesn't add up, add up for materialism in here. And that's what we wrote. Um, and we went beyond that. I argued, for instance, that um, um, the efforts these research groups have been making to find something in the brain that does correlate with uh, uh, the, 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 the phenomenology of a psychedelic trip, um, uh, these efforts may be a little bit misguided because even if they do find something, uh, it would still contradict the rest of the body of work in neuroimaging. I mean, we know, we got to the point now we can do brain uh, image extraction. Um, I, I know you know what it is, but maybe the audience is not. Um, you can train a neural network uh, with the brain scanners of people who are shown images on a screen. And then the neural network starts finding the correlations between certain patterns of brain activity and the, the image being shown to the person. After you train that, that network a lot, uh, you can get a person, uh, uh, put uh, an EEG or an fMRI, depending on the technology being used, or an EEG, um, and you can guess what the person is thinking. Actually, you can guess the imagery the person is playing in his or her mind. You can do... Uh, um, brain image extraction during dreaming. Uh, you can instrument a subject, and then when the subject wakes up, uh, you ask the subject, describe your dream, and that's double-blinded, so then he described the dream, and guess what? The researchers uh, would have guessed right what he was dreaming about because of the patterns of activa activation in his brain. So 
the rest of neuroscience finds correlations between experience and patterns of activation in the brain. But when it comes to a psychedelic trip, there is no activation, there is deactivation. So even if you find something else that correlates, now how do you explain all the rest? How do you explain the fact that when you dream, even of clenching your hand or when you dream of a statue, scientists can tell based on the activation of your brain what you were dreaming of? Looking at a statue, is there anything more boring? But when you go to Andromeda and you dine with aliens and you undergo your own birth again and you experience 11 dimensions, uh, and you realize you're a god, hey, there is not a beep. On the contrary, your brain goes to sleep. Now, nobody on earth can tell me that, well, oh, there's no problem here. No, materialism can, no, materialism can account for this, no problem. It's nonsense, of course it doesn't. So what these guys are doing, they are, and that's what they argued in their response. Well, okay, first, what, what I argue is that what's happening in a psychedelic trip is, Normal brain activity is the image of a dissociative process in my metaphysics, right? Life is the image of a dissociative process. We are dissociated from the rest of the universe. The image of that is our body. That's what it looks like, that dissociation. When you have an, an, a psychedelic trip, your normal brain activity is impaired. It's reduced. My hypothesis is that reduction you see is an impairment of the dissociative process itself. You're making the dissociative boundary more porous not in your skin, more porous in some other uh, angle or dimension. And there is an influx of transpersonal information. And that's what you will remember after the trip. That's not stuff produced within you. Uh, that stuff that is being experienced outside of you. It's an experience that is beyond the boundaries of your altar. You experience that not in you, but out there in some dimension, if you, if you want to talk about dimensions. Um, and that's what you remember afterwards once the dissociative boundary reconstitutes itself and the psychedelic wears off. Now, so I think that and it's not only psychedelics that do that. Um, if you breathe too fast, um, uh, you increase alkalinity level in your blood, the, 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 uh, the little vessel, blood vessels in your brain constrict to protect the, the brain uh, and you get less oxygen in the brain and guess what? You trip. You trip by hyperventilating. People have been hyperventilating forever. Teenagers trip by strangulation, which is highly not recommended. Some of them die, but they make a mistake on this. But if you undergo strangulation and you pass out, you trip. You have a transpersonal experience. Amazing stories. You trip if you are undergoing a G-force training in a centrifuge. Pilots have what has been described as, quote, amazing dreams while they are passed out. So um, uh, the, the savant phenomenon, uh, sometimes people are injured in the head, in the head, bullet wound or lightning or trauma, an accident or the dementia in injures the brain um, and they have enhanced cognitive skills and they have transpersonal experiences. Surgery uh, it leads to brain surgery that leaves uh, um, uh, side effects in surrounding tissue leads to damage, impairs normal brain function, and people score higher in, 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 in feelings of self-transcendence. So it's a broad pattern. It's not only psychedelics associating certain types of reduction of brain activity, impairment of normal brain function with enrichment of experience, which to, to me suggests what I'm saying, that uh, it's, re it's increasing the porosity of the dissociative boundary, and those experiences are out there. It's just that you're going out there beyond the boundaries of, of your dissociation. Psychedelics being just an instance. That's our argument. What they say is that, uh, well, you know what, we can, there is a measure of um, entropy or a measure of um, information uh, of brain activity these are sophisticated words that mean one thing, noise. That's what they mean with these sophisticated words. I don't think even Anil would deny what I said right now. What they mean is noise. Psychedelics increase, they reduce brain activity, but the residual activity has more noise and more coupling across different areas. In other words, your brain works less like different parts. It works more like one unified whole with a little bit more noise but metabolism reduces. The metabolism level reduces significantly. So what they are saying is that the psychedelic trance is generated by this more functionally coupled but lower activity noise. 
that makes no sense. One, uh, if you look at the degree of this shift, it's like point something percent increase in, 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 in this noise or entropy or the entropic brain hypothesis, whatever they call it these days. Now, you know, it's a piece ant change in a measurable brain parameter that is supposed to explain causally a psychedelic, psychedelic trip. I mean, this is insane. It, 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 I mean, it de de defies belief, not, on, not only plausibility. This is beyond plausibility. It defies credulity. Um, but it's the only game in town for, for, for the materialist. No, they, 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 they have nothing else. They, they, they have to come up with something along these lines. And uh, moreover, let me make one final point. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being so uh, verbose yeah. about this. Noise, entropy, let's call it noise because that's what it is. It has no structure. That's the point. There is more information, you know, more changes of state in the brain, but without structure. That's why it's called entropy, noise. Now, that noise is supposed to explain a highly, highly structured experience. Psychedelic trips, whatever they are, they are highly structured. It's not noise. It may be a little noise in the beginning, a little noise in, in the end. When I say that, they, I said earlier uh, in this interview that it's noisy. What I meant by that was something totally different. What I meant by that is that there, it, there's a lot of unreliable information, a lot of things that we cannot rely on. Um, and I called that noise. I'm using the word noise now in a technical sense, in the sense that uh, it is information, information activity, information changes, changes of state that have no recognizable structure, uh, no recognizable consistent pattern. Um, so that is supposed to explain the highly structure, structured phenomenology of a psychedelic trip. So for yet another reason, it defies belief, not only plausibility, I think um, we are bound to eventually give up this nonsense, but it may take a while. I think, um, I guess my, uh, you point to this, um, you're talking about how in a lot of neuroscience research, there are reports of kind of correlations, increase in brain activity with something like dreaming, right? And I think you're right that we're in the very early days of understanding the brain, right? Which is an incredibly complex, or perhaps the most complex object in, in the known universe. And, um, we start off with these these kind of uh, implicit models that are quite simple of increased brain activity, increased richness, richness of consciousness, and because of this, the kind of social structure of science, those are the kind of uh, things that get published because you find you find hey a positive correlation, let's publish that, and we don't see stuff and you can't make sense of it because it's too complicated, you don't publish it. Um, so you're right that there's this backdrop of we maybe intuitively expect to see an increase in brain activity, and in the media, the media does a very bad job of of you know, I think you criticized uh -huh. this as well in your, yeah. your piece that it's everything, no, no piece, you know, yeah. they'll take and yeah, they'll take entropy and describe it as an increase in activity, which is not a kind of um, a fair thing to describe instead of describing it as kind of increasing variability of responses or whatever. But I, I think um, what it says to me is basically that someone like um, Aldous Huxley was very far ahead of his time in thinking about the brain as a reducing valve, not, I would say, my kind of metaphysics, not of, of mind at large, but that the function of the brain isn't to create um, rich kind of complex experience. It's really, we're embedded in a, such a vast complex reality. In order to survive, the job of the brain is to trim everything down and put a lot of effort into convincing you that you are this symbol. I am James, that take all of this complexity and I am, I am this one symbol. So for every moment, it, through all my senses, all of my memories, everything is getting kind of regulated. Um, in a very metabolically expensive way to help me survive. And so what I see is, is that in this psychedelic state, the, the, um, the brain areas that tend to decrease the activity are certain kind of ones that are particularly involved in these processes, these kind of ones high up the kind of hierarchy um, that seem to basically lose control of this, this process. And you can see this, you know, in, at low psychedelic um, doses, you suddenly see the complexity of nature it for what it is, you know, you might be fascinated by the structure of a leaf and you're not um, imagining that it's really there. It just would be overwhelming if you saw a, a tree as this unbelievably beautiful fractal display of, of patterns. So I guess I, I think of it such that the, the content is almost there in the structure of reality. It's, it's there playing out through the organism as it interacts with the world. 
and that it's not that the brain is generating um that you need more kind of energy in the brain to generate more uh, kind of fireworks of, of experience that would be the kind of the way that i would think about this but you know it's it's such early days for this stuff that everybody needs to be kind of uh, humble i guess when it comes to thinking about the relationship between uh, brain and mind